Ever since the PlayStation 4 Pro came out late last year, much has been written and said about the upgraded console and of course a lot of discussion around whether or not it actually delivers on its promise, you know, whether or not it's worth the upgrade and so on and so forth. And now we have some comments from the Polish studio Flying Wild Hog or more accurately Tadeusz Zielinski from Flying Wild Hog. Now, of course, the main sort of discussion and question around the PS4 Pro is, is it actually powerful enough to deliver true 4K gaming? And he said, quote, PS4 Pro is a great upgrade over the base PS4. The CPU didn't get a big upgrade, but the GPU is a beast. It also has some interesting hardware features, which help with achieving 4K resolution without resulting to brute force. Which obviously, of course, means that, you know, there's some tricks and sneakiness, or not sneakiness, but you know what I mean, some tricks going on to get 4k pushed through the machine given that the power on the CPU side is a little bit lacking in comparison to the GPU. Of course I'm referring to things such as checkerboard rendering and other tricks that developers can actually use to get 4k going through the PS4 Pro. Now one of the other main features of the PS4 Pro is of course the ability of the console to perform two 16-bit operations simultaneously instead of one 32-bit operations and Mark Cerny of course said that this has the potential to radically increase the performance of games and on this particular topic he said quote half precision that being 16-bit instructions are a great feature they were used some time ago in GeForce FX but didn't manage to gain popularity and were dropped it's a pity because most operations don't need full float 32-bit precision and it's a waste to use full float precision for them with half precision instructions we could gain much better performance without sacrificing image quality and to be honest, out of the features that the PS4 Pro brings, PS4 Pro rather brings to the table is that ability to have a half precision float. As of course, it just makes what you have available to you more efficient and effectively double what you actually have available to you. Because you know, some not every instruction needs to use all 32 bits. It could run in tangent with another one and effectively again double the usage out of the hardware you have available and of course given that they were fairly limited in how much they could upgrade the GPU as of course they had to still have the CPU fairly similar the CPU while it is an upgrade in comparison to the vanilla PS4 if they wanted to make games work with the vanilla PS4 and the PS4 Pro they're of course fairly limited in what they could do with the CPU and with that in mind there are okay we have X amount of limitations how can we make the most use out of the hardware and of course the answer was to use that hardware more efficiently with the ability to perform two 16-bit operations at the same time and again just make better use of the hardware available now of course during this they also confirmed that Shadow Warrior 2 will be supporting the PlayStation 4 Pro but won't be supporting HDR on either the PS4 or the Xbox One S. And of course regarding the Xbox One the sort of question now remains as to what's actually going to be happening with the Xbox Scorpio. Now I would fully expect to see a reveal of this particular upgraded console at E3. Of course we saw a little bit of a sneak preview last year where they revealed that yes it is indeed a thing but they didn't really say anything other than the fact that it has six T-flops which means basically nothing without you know six T-flops on what? What CPU does it have etc. You know, we know basically nothing about the Scorpio, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. And given that Microsoft have been pushing as of late that it will be in do indeed doing 4K 60fps, it's going to be really interesting to see the response to that and, of course, how the pay PlayStation 4 Pro actually fares against that particular console. Of course, pricing, game support, what games it has, just generally speaking, is definitely going to be critical because you can have all the power in the world, but if you don't have interesting games, then it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, some interesting thoughts there from Flying Wild Hog, and again, just look forward to seeing how things progress and the response that we're going to get versus the Xbox Scorpio and what impacts this may or may not have on the Pro itself. Thank you very much for watching though guys, I'd love to hear some thoughts and opinions on everything discussed here. As always, your support is very much appreciated, and I'll see you next time.